Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I hope you are all doing very, very well today, wherever you are in the world. If you don't mind, I would very much like to share with you some thoughts that I have with respect to the recent announcement that was made in respect of the planned releases for June 2020 from the Criterion Collection. So once again, before I begin, I must please uh, ask for your forgiveness with respect to my lo-fi presentation method. So this is just my child's iPad that I'm borrowing for this particular video. And so if you want a better look at the cover art, as well as a better uh, sort of breakdown of the special features and the specifications, etc. I would, as always, recommend that you take a look at the Criterion Collection website directly for more information and high quality pictures of the planned release cover art, etc. So uh, the link, of course, will be in the description box below. And also, I should say before I begin that as of now, uh, we are now in around the middle of March 2020. And so uh, when I look at the Criterion website, I notice that there is a little indication there that says all in stock discs 30% off through April 30th. So if you're looking for a little bit of a discount for a Criterion title and you want to purchase through the Criterion website, take a look at the Criterion website, criterion.com, for further information. Hopefully, you will find what it is you are looking for. Okay, so without further ado, let me now go through the uh, planned releases for June 2020, starting with the title that will be available June 9th, 2020. Uh, this is planned for Spine 1032 by Paul Mazursky. This is the film An Unmarried Woman, and this is from 1978. So this is a very nice surprise from the Criterion Collection. It's nice to get this work by Mazursky. It's a quite a fascinating character portrait with a, a towering and uh, beautifully complex central performance by Jill Claiborne. It's a truly magnificent performance that she gives and it's, it really propels the film forward because we are so invested in this character and her ordeals and her challenges and her feelings and emotions as she is going through a different kind of emotional and personal landscape that has both ups and downs and challenges and pleasant surprises surprises etc along the way and therefore this is a, a really wonderful sort of character study on the one hand it is also a kind of slice of life uh, story on the other and there are many different facets of this character that I think are portrayed here in a both warm funny and also uh, heartfelt and uh, oftentimes quite stark and uh, uh, very honest depiction so this is the film an unmarried woman now I have to say that I haven't seen this film in quite a while and so I and that's for no other reason except it just never uh, re-emerged on my radar. But I do 
admire and appreciate it very much. And as I say, the performance by Joe Clayburgh is is really uh, uh, a stellar, stellar work. And so um, I, I will look forward to revisiting this work after many years have passed. So this is going to be a great uh, a, a great welcome, uh, an opportunity for a rewatch of this film, An Unmarried Woman. Again, I haven't seen this in maybe, oh gosh, maybe about 20 years or so. And, and I, the last time I saw it was actually on a VHS tape. So, uh, and I enjoyed it then, but uh, it just never uh, managed to uh, come across uh, my particular DVD cart, uh, except now it's going to be released on the Criterion Collection. And so this is going to be a, a fantastic opportunity. So uh, speaking of which, let's look at what the Criterion Collection has to offer with respect to this. So according to the special features breakdown, this is going to be a new 4K digital restoration with uncompressed monaural sound soundtrack on the Blu-ray. And then we have an audio commentary from 2005 featuring director Paul Mazursky and actor Jill Clayburn. And then we have new interviews with actors Michael Murphy and Lisa Lucas. And then new interview Sam Watson on Mazursky's work. So let's stop right there. So we have an audio commentary track from our previous release, uh, which is really great and welcome. And then we have new interviews uh, with these actors and then with author uh, going over the work of the director. And so uh, this usually indicates a, a criterion produced uh, supplement or otherwise a, 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 a contemporarily produced supplement. Uh, and if that's the case, that is going to be something uh, to look forward to very much. Um, and then we have an audio recording of Mazursky speaking at the American F Film Institute in 1980 plus a trailer, plus an essay by critic Angelica Jade Bastien, and we have cover design by F. Ron Miller. I apologize once again for the poor image quality of my video, but once again, you can take a look at the Criterion website directly for a better quality image. But it has a nice uh, photographic kaleidoscopic effect uh, motif, uh, and I think that is very reflective of the how should I put it, of the film in the sense that it's a sort of multifaceted and uh, uh, multi-reflection or multi-reflective uh, uh, character portrait of this particular uh, person, the, the main character of the film. And so I think that is a, a, a very apt motif to choose, and so I'm, I'm liking this very much. So this is An Unmarried Woman. Uh, it's a, as they say, it's a very... Uh, it is a very effective work and one that has a lot of truth to it and one that really speaks uh, to a lot of uh, emotions when dealing with uh, certain uh, issues with respect to uh, breakups and relationships and everything that that entails and uh, really as a kind of uh, a catalyst for uh, entering into a, a different phase of one's life and what that means and and uh, everything uh, in between of course so this is a, a, a quite a, a a good work and one that as I say I've seen but I haven't seen in in quite the quite many years so I'm looking forward to this very much uh, this is Paul Mazursky's film an unmarried woman. Next, scheduled for release June 16th, 2020, for Spine Number 1033 from Edward Sedgwick from 1928. This is the Buster Keaton film, The Cameraman. Now, it is wonderful to see. Uh, this film uh, emerged in the Criterion Collection, uh, Buster Keaton in the Criterion Collection. And to have this film in particular is really great because this is a kind of tour de force uh, in terms of ideas and wonderful sight gags and set pieces and the way in which 
uh, the kind of uh, the joy of film is being presented uh, in many ways, uh, sort of three dimensionally, as it were. And 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 what is more, it's 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 almost like uh, a a sublime example of the high level of genius that was the craft, the artistic craft and cinematic artistry of Buster Keaton. So. To see this film in the Criterion Collection really warms my heart in, in many ways. Uh, so this is really wonderful, uh, really, really wonderful indeed. It's one of the great examples of Buster Keaton's genius, and so uh, it's, it's going to be great to see this in the Criterion Collection. Speaking of the Criterion release, this is being described as a new 4K digital restoration. So that's great. You know, I haven't seen... Uh, this in a 4K restoration, so it'll be great to see this and see what uh, how that affects the the overall effect of the film. Plus, there is going to be a new score by composer Timothy Brock, which appears to have been uh, conducted and performed in 2020, presented in uncompressed stereo on the Blu-ray. So that's also very great. You know, I'm not the biggest expert when it comes to the various scores here, but I haven't heard this particular new score by Timothy Brock, and uh, it seems like it's going to be a very new one. So uh, this it says new score, so this is something to look forward to. Uh, then we have an audio commentary track. It's not a new commentary track, but this is from 2004, uh, featuring Glenn Mitchell, author of A to Z of Silent Film Comedy, an Illustrated Companion. Uh, and then we have, as a supplement, the film from 1929, uh, Buster Keaton film, Spite Marriage. Uh, and this is in a new 2K restoration, and this also includes, quite remarkably, a 2004 commentary by film historians John uh, Bengston and Jeffrey Vance. Uh, let me just stop there and say this is a really wonderful thing to have essentially two films in one release. According to the details here, it looks like the film Spite Marriage will not get its own uh, spy number. Uh, that's always been an interesting uh, uh, little issue or a little kind of question that I've always had in my mind. You know, what what determines ultimately what films get the spy number treatment and what other films uh, become supplements to the main releases? I mean, we've seen many uh, examples in the past of other films being released as supplements to the main release of a particular film. Quite recently we saw this with, for example, uh, Soul Power as a, a supplement to the release of When We Were Kings. We also saw it earlier with uh, uh, the, the release of The Lodger, and it included uh, the other Alfred Hitchcock film, Downhill, uh, which is a full film, but it included that film as a supplemental feature. and so. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it could have been uh, that those films could have had their own standalone release, but for whatever reason, they were released as supplements. Well, here we have a similar situation with Spite Marriage and The Cameraman. Uh, this time, however, this is very interesting because this indicates that the film Spite Marriage, which will be included as a supplement to The Cameraman, will have its own commentary track. Uh, which is uh, which is really great. So we're getting two films for the price of one, and we're also getting two commentary tracks for the price of one, plus other special features. So uh, I mean, it, it one can wonder uh, whether or not this could have had its own release, but uh, I think the fact that it's going to be released at all is uh, really great news. So that's going to be with the cameraman, so the film Spite Marriage from 1929. And then continuing on with the special features, we have Time Travelers, a new documentary by Daniel Rame, featuring interviews with Bankston and film historian Mark Wanamaker. And then we have So Funny It Hurt, Buster Keaton and MGM, a 2004 documentary by film historians Kevin Brownlow and Christopher Bird. 
uh, and a new interview with James L. Nyber, author of The Fall of Buster Keaton, his films for MGM, Educational Pictures, and Columbia. Uh, and we have finally an essay by film critic Imogen Sarah Smith. So this is going to be a really great, uh, great uh, release uh, for, um, I mean, the fact that we get not only the cameraman, not only Spite Marriage, not only do we get the commentary tracks, but we also get the uh, uh, the 2004 documentary, plus we get uh, a couple of new documentaries along the way, plus a new score, uh, plus an essay by uh, Imogen Sarah Smith. And as you know, I am a big fan of her work. I'm very happy whenever she makes a contribution to any Criterion release. So we're going to get an essay from her so that's really wonderful plus the cover art my friends take a look at that Victor Melamed is credited as being the artist for this cover art and oh gosh this looks really great now this is uh, very consistent with the film if you know the film already uh, in terms of the film camera motif in terms of Buster Keaton himself and a, a, a someone uh, who is accompanying Buster Keaton as well so uh, this is the film the cameraman with really splendid artwork accompanying it so we have this film to look forward to on June 16th, 2020. I am certainly looking forward to this, my friends. This is Spine 1033. This is The Cameraman. Next, scheduled for release June 23rd, 2020 for Spine number 1034 from 2019 from filmmaker Celine Siama. This is the film Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Now, I have not seen this film as of the time of this video. I have seen the trailer for this film. I have been urged by so many of my friends and viewers of this channel to watch this film because a lot of people uh, out there have already seen this film and have, can, uh, have told me just how brilliant and emotionally moving it is uh, in terms of this, uh, what I understand to be a, a, a depiction of a relationship uh, between these particular characters. And so I, am, I have been recommended uh, this film quite, quite intensely and very positively by a number of people. Uh, so as you know, I am not so good with watching recent releases, and this is from 2019, so it's a very recent release. Uh, I've been trying to watch it, but uh, unfortunately I have not been able to do so. So what does Criterion do? It helps to, uh, in terms of bringing this film to the collection, and so I'm very grateful for that. And I can see once uh, I can see once this is released uh, exactly uh, why it is that people are really enthusiastic about it as they are. Uh, this uh, looks to be a really uh, wonderful uh, release. Once again, we see Criterion trying to. Uh, release very very up-to-date modern films recent releases as well as the sort of uh, the classic films and so uh, this is uh, one that has gone gotten a lot of critical attention and also from my own experience through this YouTube channel a lot of people have told me to see this film so uh, I'm so happy to see this in the Criterion collection uh, when uh, June arrives so this is Portrait of a Lady on Fire. And according to the website, the director approved special edition features are a new 4K digital master with 5.1 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack on the Blu ray. Um, again, I'm not sure as to uh, the actual uh, visual style of the film because I haven't seen it. I do know based on the trailer that I saw that there is a lot of fine uh, detail and color uh, and uh, a lot of beautiful framing, at least based on what I have seen. 
And so uh, if that's the case, then it'll be very uh, exciting to see exactly how this particular presentation looks. It, it should be very great indeed. And then there is a new conversation between director Celine uh, Siam and film critic Dana Stevens. Uh, so that's a very great indeed. You know, I, I have seen a number of interviews with the director and uh, some of the stars of the film, which I'll get to in a second. And so uh, they are all very uh, well spoken and uh, very articulate. And so uh, this will be very good to see as well, this new conversation, which is probably indicating a criterion produced uh, conversation or interview style conversation. And then speaking of the actors, we have new interviews with actors Adele Anel and Noemi Merlon. And so as I said, I have seen interviews with these actors uh, with respect to this film, uh, given the great critical attention that it gained around the end of last year, or maybe the beginning of this year. And so this is, uh, they, they, again, it's really great to hear what it is they have to say. And uh, as these are new interviews, I can assume that they are very likely criterion produced interviews. Perhaps uh, we should wait and see what they are exactly, but they are still indicated as being new. And uh, I, again, I've enjoyed what I've seen from them. Uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing uh, the film, but then afterwards seeing these interviews to see exactly what, what they have to, uh, to say uh, in terms of the specifics. So uh, these are new interviews with actors Adele Anel and Noemi Merlon. And then we have interview with a cinematographer Claire Maton from the 2019 Cannes Film Festival. And so, uh, Again, this is really wonderful. Uh, I again, I cannot speak specifically to the cinematography except based on the the various clips that I have seen. Uh, but if what I have seen is any indication, then it'll be really wonderful to hear uh, from the cinematographer herself about uh, the particular choices that were made. So uh, looking forward to that as well. Plus an interview from 2019 with artist Hélène Delmer on creating the paintings for the film, along with behind the scenes footage. Uh, so I understand also that this is a very key component of the film. Uh, and so if that's the case, then it'll be great to get this insight from the artist herself. Incidentally, the artwork uh, for the Criterion release is credited as being by Hélène Delmer herself, so that's a nice little touch as well, uh, using uh, the artist's artwork as the artwork for the Criterion release. Uh, very nice indeed. Plus new English subtitle translation, plus an essay by film critic uh, Ella Bittencourt, and then the cover art as I indicated. So this is the film in the current release slate that I have not seen. This is one that I have been trying to see for a long time based on your recommendations. And this is one that has been rumored and so it's good to see at last uh, it emerging in the Criterion Collection. So this is the film that is scheduled for release June 23rd, 2020 uh, for Spine 1034. This is the film Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Next, this is scheduled for release June 23rd, 2020. This is from 1965. The filmmaker is Kon Ichikawa, and this is Spine 155. This is a title that is already existing in the Criterion Collection, uh, in a certain way anyway. This is the film Tokyo Olympiad, and Tokyo Olympiad, as I said, was 155, spine number 155. It existed as a DVD, which is right here in fact. This DVD subsequently fell out of print, and so I understand that it is now currently out of print. But then, some years later, the film itself emerged in this huge box set called 100 Years of Olympic Films. This was this huge uh, Blu-ray set which included a lot of the Olympic themed films included in which of course is Tokyo Olympiad uh, on Blu-ray. But until now none of the films had been broken out of this set. Uh, so, But now we have Tokyo Olympiad getting its own 
Blu-ray standalone release, and it's coming back to the Criterion Collection under that standalone release. Because as you know, just as a matter of Criterion spine number uh, technical uh, details, this box set was spine number 900. So Tokyo Olympiad was included as part of this box set, but it was never indicated uh, when it was part of this box set as having its own spine number. So now we have Tokyo Olympiad uh, back in the Criterion Collection as this new Blu-ray with this new cover art, uh, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, and uh, wonderful news, wonderful news. And there are some new things to look forward to. Uh, and uh, uh, But we'll get to that in a second. But as a film, this is really one of those towering, towering achievements in a kind of sports documentary vein. It also gives the impression of a period in time that once was but no longer is. Uh, and it gives us a real sense of being there and also a kind of surrounding nature to its, its, uh, its uh, presentation of events. Uh, it's a uh, really remarkable and fascinating document uh, from Ichikawa, so uh, it's wonderful to see. And of course, now being 2020, this is of course the year where the Tokyo Olympics are being planned to be held this year. Now, of course, there are certain, as of now, it's the around the middle of March 2020, and so there are still perhaps some uh, some uncertainties uh, given the current world situation as to whether the Tokyo Olympics will indeed be held or not. I'm not sure. But in any event, uh, they are still planned for 2020. And so it seems to be very fitting to have Tokyo Olympiad be released in June 2020, uh, you know, around the time of when the games are supposed to be held. And so that is a nice uh, set of timing. So, um, uh, I mean, regardless of world events, uh, at the very least, it's wonderful to have this film back in the collection uh, in this new Blu-ray form. So let us talk about the Blu-ray. What, what it is it about the Blu-ray that uh, we can expect? So uh, first of all, it says it's a new 4K digital restoration with uncompressed monaural soundtrack on the Blu-ray. So let's stop there for a second. You know, I, I am... Not sure what the word new means. Uh, will this be a the restoration of the film or the same presentation that we saw with the uh, the box set, the Olympics box set, or will it be a new 4K digital restoration? I am not sure, and so we're going to have to wait and see uh, for the spec uh, the technical specifications when the release comes in June. So, uh, that's something to look forward to, but it does say for purposes of the website, new 4k digital restoration, whatever that means. And then there's the audio commentary from 2001 by film historian, Peter Cowie. Now I should note that the commentary track can be found on the now out of print DVD from Criterion. It's a really great track. Peter Cowie is a really wonderful commentary uh, commentary specialist and film historian and film uh, film expert. Um, so it's wonderful to have that. You know, I don't think we got that commentary track in the uh, Olympics box set. So to see the commentary track return for the Blu-ray. Is really nice. Plus, we have a new introduction to the film by uh, Peter Cowie himself. So that's that's really wonderful. Now, I, I should point out that with respect to Peter Cowie, as some of you may know, he wrote the text for the huge booklet that came with the Hundred Years Olympic Films uh, set from Criterion. And so this is a kind of gargantuan achievement. And so he is a very big expert when it comes to uh, these uh, wonderful uh, films from uh, the Olympics uh, uh, tradition, but in particular this film. And so it'll be great to see his contribution uh, in a new introduction. Uh, so uh, that's uh, something to look forward to as well. Also something to look forward to is 80 minutes of additional material from the Tokyo Games with a new introduction by Cowie. So this is this is something that I haven't seen, or at least I don't think I've seen. 
Um, this is something that I'm not sure is included. Uh, it's not included in the Criterion disc, and it's not, as far as I'm aware, included in the box set, but there is something else that I'll get to in a second that, that could be relevant. But in any event, 80 minutes of additional material from the Tokyo Games. Wow, it sounds like its own little mini film. And uh, if that's the case, then uh, that is a lot of material uh, potentially to, to look forward to. So uh, this is really great. Plus more uh, commentary from Cowie himself, uh, this time in, in the form of a new introduction. So that is really great to see. Next we have archival interviews with director Konichikawa. Now, I should be very clear here. According to the Criterion website, it says archival interviews, plural, interviews. I uh, emphasize this because, as some of you may know who have this DVD from the Criterion Collection, this included one interview with Ichikawa. It was about a 30-minute interview conducted in 1992, I want to say. And so that was a really long and great interview. And uh, you know, he's sitting in the middle of a stadium and he's giving his interview. It's, it's really quite great. And so but that's wonderful. But it's just one interview, as far as I remember. And so I'm assuming that that interview will be included as part of the supplements here. But it says also archival interviews. So can we expect there to be more interviews with Ichikawa? Uh, if so, when were they conducted, etc.? It's not quite clear to me what this specifically means, but this is something to look forward to indeed, especially if it means the possibility of getting more interviews that weren't necessarily included in past Criterion releases. So uh, something to keep an eye out for when the release arrives. And then there is a new documentary about Ichikawa featuring interviews with cameraman Maso Yamaguchi, longtime Ichikawa collaborator Chizuko, Osaka and the director's son Tatsumi Ichikawa. Wonderful. This is again described as being a new documentary. So uh, this is probably going to be a Criterion produced one. Uh, if so, then that's something to look forward to. It'll give some perspective, I assume, on the life and career of Ichikawa and especially how that information might help better uh, uh, elaborate upon the film Tokyo Olympiad itself. So in any event, this is something very much to look forward to indeed. Plus trailers, plus new English subtitle translation, plus an essay by film scholar James Quant. Now, I should mention a couple things here. Uh, so all this stuff that is planned for the Criterion release of uh, Tokyo Olympiad sounds great. It really sounds great. I should point out though, that if you are interested in the um, if you are interested in the box set, I should point out that the box set also includes the booklet, which has the text written by Peter Cowie, and this text does not seem to be included as part of the essays for the Tokyo Olympiad Blu-ray that's going to be in, uh, coming in June 2020. That's what it appears like to me. So the essays on the film Tokyo Olympiad, I'm assuming, will not be included in the upcoming Blu-ray release. Okay, so we'll have to uh, keep an eye out for that when the new Blu-ray Blu release arrives. Uh, so, th But that possibility is there. Another thing that uh, we should point out is among the films that were included, in the 100 years Olympics film set that relate to the Tokyo Games of 1964. Of course, there is the film Tokyo Olympiad right here, which is part of the, the Olympic set. There is also the film called Sensation of the Century, which is a kind of uh, a film, another documentary uh, about the, the games using the same footage, but sort of edited uh, differently uh, and presented in a different manner. And so uh, this is a, a very interesting uh, comparative uh, analysis possibility, as well as being another sort of perspective, another presentation on the same games itself. So it's, it's a very fascinating document to have, especially when looking at it uh, compared to Tokyo Olympiad. So it's a wonderful that this had been included, as I say, in the Olympics box set. But according to the special features, this film, Sensation of the Century, does not seem to be part of the 
Blu-ray package. So uh, that might be something to consider when you are thinking about the box set versus the Tokyo Olympiad uh, Blu-ray uh, release in, in June. Um, incidentally, of course, the as I mentioned, the Blu-ray supplements uh, seem to include 80 minutes of additional material from the Tokyo Games. So it's not clear to me exactly whether what if that means. Uh, 80 minutes that might be something akin to what we saw in Sensation of the Century. My guess is, is that it's not, although of course there will be uh, very likely uh, a lot of overlap in the footage, or potentially so, because it's coming from generally the same source or similar source of materials, I'm assuming. But then again, uh, I'm looking at the Criterion description, and the more I think about it, the more I realize that the possibility could be that this could be from a different source. Who knows? After all, it says 80 minutes of additional material from the Tokyo Games, whatever that means. That could mean essentially anything. So uh, that could have some bearing on Tokyo Olympiad and Sensation of the Century, or it might not. Uh, but in any event, my friends, I just want to be absolutely clear that uh, the film Sensation of the Century appears not to be included as part of the supplements for Tokyo Olympiad. But if you are interested in Sensation of the Century, uh, you can consider getting the set 100 uh, years of Olympic films. Uh, so there is that. And then I should mention that the artwork here is so great. It's so, so great. Uh, this is new cover by Anthony uh, Geraci. I hope I get the pronunciation correct. And this is uh, just stunning, absolutely stunning. A really a brilliant depiction of this. You know, this is a very, uh, this is an important moment in sort of um, uh, kind of a national identity. And also, of course, it's an expression of the Olympics. And so uh, all those elements, I think, are uh, intertwined in this in a very uh, kind of striking uh, cover art. And so I'm very happy to see this uh, cover art, uh, you know, especially when compared to the earlier DVD cover, art, which of course, I, I think the earlier DVD cover art is very good, but there's something quite um, uh, aesthetically very powerful about the uh, sort of uh, um, almost minimalist approach to uh, the depiction of the Tokyo Olympiad uh, film. And so uh, this is really great. It's a nice also contrast with the earlier DVD uh, so there is Tokyo Olympiad, the artwork. Uh, finally, I should mention something about the booklet uh, for the DVD and my hopes for the, the upcoming Blu-ray. Um, so as I said, the essay uh, for the upcoming Blu-ray is indicated as being by film scholar James Quant. Uh, that's really great because I've always enjoyed James Quant's essays. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's wonderful. I should point out that the booklet that came with the DVD does not have the James Quant essay. It has a, a write-up by George Plimpton, uh, which is uh, which is very good. Uh, then we have a write-up called Tokyo Olympiad, a symposium, which is a number of participants essentially covering various topics uh, that relate to Tokyo Olympiad. So this is actually very, very helpful. It was quite long, and so it was wonderful to have in this volume. So apparently, according to the description on the Criterion website, those two writings, I'm not sure if will be included in the upcoming Blu-ray release. Um, I hope they will be because they are really good, in particular the symposium writings. Uh, but we shall see. We shall see. Um, if not, then that might mean that if you're interested, uh, it, it might be worth looking for the, the DVD if, uh, if you can find it at a reasonable price. Also, what's great about the booklet is that it has the chapter breakdown of the, the film based on the chapters. And the chapter breakdown uh, is titled According to the Event. So if you're interested in a particular event, all you have to do is check the chapter breakdown. You can go to that, uh, skip to that particular event. Uh, so that's very helpful. Also, what is helpful in this is that in the back, it has actually all of the medalists of the 1964 games uh, listed here. So if you wanted to have a uh, just a one stop shop, as, as it were, in terms of of who won what event, who won bronze, silver, or gold in what event uh, in uh, the Olympic Games in 1964. You have this uh, great reference uh, handy at your fingertips. And so my hope is that these two uh, things, you know, the chapter breakdown list and the list of the winners 
the medalists will also be included in the essay. I'm not sure if they will. Fingers crossed that they are. Uh, but that's uh, that's a really wonderful, charming thing about the DVD and the booklet are those two um, uh, extra additional things. And so uh, let's keep our fingers crossed and hopefully that will also be included for the Tokyo Olympiad Blu-ray. But uh, we shall see, of course. Uh, in any event, my friends, it's wonderful to see this film return on its own spy number, back at spy number 155, and uh, I'm looking forward to this one very much. It's close to the Olympic, it is the Olympic year, and so it's a kind of a great celebration uh, of that. And at the very least, my friend, it is a wonderful return of this film, uh, Tokyo Olympiad, to the Criterion Collection. Next, this is scheduled for release June 30th, 2020. This is for spine number 1035 from 1985 from L.M. Klimov. This is the film Come and See. This has been anticipated uh, in terms of coming to the Criterion Collection for a number of years now. It's just been a matter of when, and people have been anticipating this uh, quite intensely, and I think for good reason, because this is a unforgettable, harrowing, uh, powerful, dark, difficult, quite, uh, quite disturbing masterpiece. Once you've seen it, you can never unsee it, if you know what I mean, and. Uh, if you're talking about a film that is trying to depict the real sense of horror and also loss of innocence, but also a kind of uh, momentary glimpse at sort of a poetic sense of nature and quiet uh, that are scattered about uh, amongst the, the, the grander, broader, uh, situations of war and death, then the film Come and See uh, is something certainly to behold. And it is one of those uh, truly uh, horrifying and uh, thus uh, very challenging and thought-provoking works. Uh, there are many mysteries about it still. There are many difficult scenes about it, but this is something that is also presenting these bleak themes in a very, uh, in, in a very sort of artistically um, a forthright sort of way, and also in a way that uh, never betrays the authenticity of what it's trying to portray. At the same time, it also presents moments of sheer cinematic power. Uh, this is the film Come and See, and this is a, 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 f a film that I think for good reason many people have been waiting for, and to see it at last come to the Criterion Collection is uh, something that I, for one, uh, am very, very excited for. Uh, this is uh, one to see. Uh, it's a very difficult film, but um, it is one that is, is really uh, unforgettable and to see it uh, emerge in the Criterion Collection is uh, something to celebrate. This is the great masterpiece. Come and see. Now the special features indicate new 2K digital restoration uh, with uncompressed mineral soundtrack for the Blu-ray. So uh, I've never seen this in, I mean, I've seen this so many, many times, but I've never seen it in a sort of 4K restoration version. So I will look forward to seeing this in this new presentation to see how it looks and how, it, how I'm therefore going to react to the film. Uh, it's a, potentially going to be a very eye-opening eye experience. So I'm um, looking forward to that very much. Plus, a new interview with cinematographer Roger Deakins. Um, that should be interesting. Uh, but also, we have a new interview with director L.M. Klimov's brother and frequent collaborator, German Klimov. 
So that's also very interesting. Uh, these are both new interviews. So this is, uh, these are probably new uh, criterion produced supplements. So those are always great to have. And then we have Flaming Memory, a three film documentary series from 1975 to 1977 uh, by filmmaker Viktor Dashuk, featuring first hand accounts of survivors of the genocide in Belarus during World War II. So this is uh, essentially what the subject matter is of this film. Um, uh, Belarus and the Nazi occupation of this particular part of the world during World War II and what all that entails and as far as uh, this particular uh, these particular set of characters and so to have the historical context which uh, will be provided by this uh, documentary uh, will be, uh, hopefully be uh, very helpful uh, to anyone who's watching this film, I, and uh, myself included, of course. Uh, so this is going to be something that will be potentially very helpful indeed to provide a historical context for all the, the scenes that we are watching unfold. And then we have a 2001 interview with the director Ellen Klimov himself. And then we have a, more 2001 interviews, this time with uh, actor Alexei uh, Kravchenko, uh, and then we have uh, production designer Viktor Petrov. So um, uh, Kravchenko is the actor who is the main character, and his character is depicted here, in fact. And so uh, that's really wonderful to have. You know, I've seen some interviews with, um, um, with Kravchenko, uh, and so uh, he's, it, it's always nice to hear uh, what it is he has to say. So uh, this is something to be really great. And uh, he really gives one of those uh, just unforgettable performances in any film. Uh, really, if you haven't seen it, uh, you're really in for something else indeed. Uh, wow, wow. And then there's a 1985 short film called How Come and See Was Filmed, uh, which is about the making of the film. Uh, so that should be good to have again from 1985. And then theatrical re-release trailer, new English subtitle translation, plus essays by critic Marc Le Fanu and poet uh, uh, Valgina Mort. So that should be very interesting. Uh, so she is a uh, sort of a contemporary poet. And so uh, that'll be interesting to hear uh, what she has to say. I should say one other thing before I go, which is Jackson Norson is credited as being the artist for this artwork. Now, looking at this artwork, this is stunning. Really, really stunning. Uh, this is a kind of a, based on uh, maybe one of the very, one of many f uh, famous sort of iconic images from the film and, f or, and from uh, certain pictures that are relevant to the film. Uh, but looking at this artwork, looking at the sort of gritty detail is once again very reflective of what the film is potentially going to offer. Uh, so this artwork is really stunning and I cannot wait to look at it uh, actually physically and to see just the detail and the, the dirt and the wrinkles and the, and the pain and the suffering and the, the struggle and, and the, 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 the tiredness, uh, it's all there. And that, that's, that, that, that's exactly what this film is about. And so this cover art captures that feeling uh, very vividly. Uh, so well done here, well done indeed. For a lot of people, this is probably the release that uh, many have been waiting for. And I think uh, hopefully that is also an indication for anyone out there who has not seen the film. Uh, again, it's a very harrowing work and it's very difficult, but if you are okay with that kind of subject matter and if you have not seen this film yet, this is an ideal opportunity to catch up with what is uh, undoubtedly one of those great towering works of 1980s um, uh, Soviet cinema. Uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, this is something that you will never forget and it has a long-lasting impact. It is so powerful, it is so raw, and it is also so poetic and very expressive. This is, a, this is going to be uh, potentially a very monumental release from the Criterion Collection, so uh, something to look forward to uh, very much so. 
in June 2020. This is the film uh, Elam Klimov's Come and See. So, my friends, so that's it as far as my own comments with respect to June 2020 Criterion Collection. What do you think? Are you excited for this particular month? Are you so, so excited? Are you not so excited? Whatever the case may be, my friends, it would be very, uh, very great uh, if you could leave your comment. I'd love to hear what it is you have to say in uh, the comment section below. As always, my friends, your input is so important to me, and uh, I look forward to hearing what it is you have to say. It's looking to be a very, uh, very good month indeed. Uh, of these films, as I've mentioned, I haven't seen one of them, which is Portrait of a Lady on Fire, the most recent of the releases, and so uh, that will be something to look forward to for me personally very much. Um, and there have been there are other films that I haven't seen in quite a while, so An, An Unmarried Woman is one I haven't seen in many, many years, so that'll be great to revisit. Um, and then there is... Uh, the uh, Buster Keaton work, which is uh, always uh, great to have. Not one, but two, of course. So, a well done criterion on that front. Plus, we had the return of Tokyo Olympiad to the Criterion Collection in its spine number glory, and also uh, a few additional. Uh, 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 supplements along the way, which will be great. And then, last but certainly not least, of course, is the uh, uh, Klimov masterpiece, Come and See. Uh, which uh, is, again, one of the most unforgettable experiences that one potentially will have with cinema. So this is shaping up to be a very potentially memorable month uh, in the year. And uh, uh, once again, Criterion continues to impress, surprise, and amaze. And uh, it's no wonder that Criterion has a lot of loyal fans because uh, every month, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned anyway, uh, they don't disappoint. So well done, Criterion, and thank you very much for uh, presenting us with this announcement. So I'm looking forward to June 2020 very much. So, my friends, thank you very much for your time, and please take good care of yourselves and your friends and family, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. I look forward to hearing from you, and until we meet again, my friends, thank you, be well, and cheers. Mm -hmm.